So I wanted to focus this show on how sound and really bringing it home and exploring the, the, the geography and the ecology and the, the wildlife here and helping to tell the story of how sound in part because it needs to be told. Because I've worked out like six of my 12 paintings so far in my head. So once I've worked it out in my head that I'm comfortable, I know what I'm gonna do, I just gotta do it. But yeah, it's a little stressful not having the full idea yet. and how sound has changed a lot in the last hundred years. And it started with the copper mine and a pulp mill and then another pulp mill and a chemical plant and the massive uh, logging and using salmon streams as logging uh, runs or shoots and uh, fishing, whaling. It's taken a beating. When you think about the industrial history of the sound, because there was a copper mine um, just up in the mountains there that in the 20th century, it was one of the largest source point pollution centers in, in the country. Um, it leached acid water into the, into the sound and it contributed to um, a massive die off essentially of a lot of the life. Like people used to do marine surveys along here and they would just have, there was nothing that was living here because the water was very acidic. We organized the first field work and we're doing some herring uh, data collection uh, following the spawns of herring on the west side of the house out. I'm stoked. I, I, I don't mind the cold that much. I can get, I can get looking forward to it for sure. Uh, I, I do love getting out here, especially on our own territory. It's just more meaningful to me in a way because this is where my people come from. And something that I'm hoping to learn is the process of how to look over each herring spawn to figure out how long each one will be and then how many will be in it. I've just been wanting to learn about a lot of the imp culturally important animals in our area and herring is one of them and I just want to learn more about them. So herring is a really neat story in the sound because it kind of encapsulates the whole marine recovery experience in this region. Forage fish being at the bottom of the food chain are going to be one of the first to sort of experience that. Um, decline in marine health. A couple decades ago, um, when some of the industry improved its practices or, or shut down, um, the water quality started returning. Yeah, we're just kind of excited to have that momentum and that positive recovery to build upon. Because herring are, are you know, when herring and when forage fish return, that's why we're seeing so many marine mammals and cetaceans and whales um, visit this area. They're eating these fish. It's been a path to recovery for the last few decades. And we're only now, I think, starting to really see the effects of that cleanup with the herring coming back to spawn and the whales returning and humpback whales that were hunted to near extinction here in House Hound and elsewhere are coming back now, which is amazing <laughs> to see and to be here on Bowen during that the time where they've started to come back is really exciting. Ah, there's so many facets to why I'm drawn to water. 
is calming, but it's not always calming because sometimes it's crazy. And so maybe that's what I like, the ever-changingness of it, and it's always different. And it's so neat to, to watch. When I paint water, I try to communicate the action and the energy and the movement of water using only a few colors. So usually three, but sometimes five. And it's just all in the transition of the colors and the shapes of my lines. So I just watch water a lot to try and catch that. The energy. It's just so cool because the wildlife is right there. Like, I find a lot of times when you're in the forest, the wildlife kind of hides, runs away from you a little bit. But on the beach, it's almost like everything is just, it's, it, it's doing its thing. Life goes on and the birds just go by and they forage and the seals pop up and the shore life is there, the intertidal life is doing its thing. Not only the act of painting makes me happy, but the ability f to share my paintings and have, have them received and for them to go off into the world and tell a story, that really makes me happy. Why do I live on Bowen? Well, this, the nature, uh, having access to the forest and the sea and the mountains and just being completely surrounded by it. And it's just good for my mental health. I, I love nature. I need to be surrounded by nature. Mm. The calm, the serenity, peacefulness, the beauty. Mm. Maybe we can find some starfish. Even just going for a short walk through the forest has amazing effect on me and how ah, the water's so clear. Lots of mussels here. I put mussels in the painting I'm working on now for the first time. I painted mussels. It was hard because my work's not like super detailed. So like to get these things that are like really finely detailed, how do I put those in? We saw the turkey vultures. Um, that's also a lovely spot to swim and snorkel. about the sponge reefs because they're so deep in the ocean that I would never have the opportunity as 
because I'm not a diver. I'd never be able to see them. So I really wanted to get some first-hand uh, feedback on the, the feeling of the reefs and a little bit know a little bit more about them. It's just a wealth of knowledge. They're very ancient. They were actually thought to be extinct for the longest time. Discovered off the coast here, and how sound has proved to have a lot of sponge reefs, which is really really cool. The glass sponge reef, <laughs> and then also they they filter a lot of water, so it's believed that the sponges are actually really important in the in the ecosystem. And yeah, I, I want to learn more about it, but just the thought of them being here and how sound after having thought to be been extinct. It's just too cool. My name is Adam Taylor. I am a uh, scuba diver and uh, conservation uh, activist. I uh, volunteer with the Marine Life Sanctuary Society and with the Underwater Council of BC. So um, a lot of my volunteer work is involved in uh, access to scuba diving sites and, and more recently um, discovery and documentation and the political side of uh, trying to gain protection for the glass sponge reefs. Absolutely fascinating. So essentially we've got living dinosaurs right offshore here, all around. If I had to sum up my role, it's collecting images, but also trying to take the, the larger scientific ideas and break it down into simple stories and to share it broadly, but from the bottom up. Glass sponges are found throughout the world's temperate oceans, but actual reefs are only found off the coast of British Columbia. So essentially we have a habitat type that it's about 6,000 years old in, in Howe Sound, but it's the exact same habitat type that pre-existed with the dinosaurs and predates them. So it's, it's like a little bit of history, and not just history, ancient history in our backyard. It's absolutely fascinating. The main reason I'm involved is because it's a broad, holistic approach, and it's not purely conservation, it's not purely planning, it's can we get as much of the information together into one spot so people can learn and make decisions and make informed decisions on, on, on topics. So I think it's a fabulous, fabulous uh, initiative. As far as I know, it's not that it's um, necessarily brand new data. A lot of it is but I think it's just bringing it all together and tying in and showing the importance of the connectivity of everything. And at least visually bringing it all in the same spot, you kind of get that sense. You know, you, you're, what happens up here is gonna affect down here and what happens up in the mountains will affect the bottom of the ocean and it's all connected. Paintings are just things in my head and they want to come out and so I put the work in to get them out and they have a story and a spirit and I'm communicating what has inspired me, the spirit of this place that inspired me to make the painting and I'm communicating that. So I never really thought about the, the greater purpose of those paintings but if I had to choose a thing that is extremely important to me to do with my paintings, yes. It would be communicating or bridging, bridging the gap between art and science and inspiring people to look deeper at things and to wonder and to ask questions and want to get to know and to maybe come out here and sit here for a while and feel the spirit of the place.
legacy, I always just think of my daughter, right? She's like a tangible thing that's gonna be living on. I'm hoping that a lot of this that we can see now is still around when she's older. Are these little time capsules, my paintings? <laughs> That's kind of a cool way to think about it. I don't need, we don't need to preserve it the way it is, but we need to help protect what's there and to ensure the survival of species and of habitats and ecosystems and everything that's connected. So, yeah, you can't save the grizzly bear without saving this habitat and the watershed that feeds the river, that feeds the salmon, and the ocean that feeds the salmon, everything. I feel like I've only just started learning about the tremendous efforts that a lot of people have put into repairing the um, ecosystems here. And, and not only that, but just getting House Sound recognized as the amazing place that it is. Uh, but that it could change at the drop of a hat, and especially with global warming and climate change. And healthy ecosystem is abundant. We just got to take care of those things as best we can. That's the legacy.